So good afternoon everyone, thank you for being here. Uh, I am Mohamed Amir Youssef from Max Planck Institute in Germany. This is a joint work with Mark Spaniol and Gerard Weikom from the same institute. So let me first introduce the problem with an example. So in a sentence like what we see now on the screen, we have the phrase like visitors of Sheikh Zayed. I mean the noun Sheikh Zayed, the name Sheikh Zayed can refer to multiple entities. For example, it can refer to the former president of the United Arab Emirates, it can be the city in Egypt, or it can be the famous mosque in Abu Dhabi. So uh, the problem of named entity disambiguation is basically finding, finding the correct mapping or the entity that was intended by the writer of this sentence. Why this is important? Because NED is very essential for many IR tasks, like relation extraction. And this is the main component that's used to enrich knowledge bases, and they are the main asset behind, like Apple Siri and Goise, uh, Google Voice Assist, for example. It also gives uh, us better uh, analytics because we have now uh, like statistics about entities, not about names. So if an entity can be mentioned different names, we will be able to produce analytics using the entity itself. Uh, furthermore, um, the existing um, NED systems, I mean, this, this is not a novel problem, of course. It has been discussed in the literature for decades. But the existing systems are all geared for English, and we'll see what are uh, the missing components for Arabic. And Arabic content, as of course, is relevant for this workshop. It's very uh, growing very recently. And the Arabic Wikipedia is way smaller than the English one. And most of the NED systems are, systems are based on uh, the Arabic Wikipedia. So let's, I mean, we, we adopted AIDA system. AIDA is an open source uh, NED framework produced in-house in Max Planck Institute as well. And we adopted the system to accommodate the Arabic text. This is why the name AIDA Arabic came from. So let's first have a look at AIDA uh, quickly. So I mean, how it works? I mean, we cast the NED problem into a graph problem where we have two types of nodes. The first type is the mentioned nodes, like the names of the entities. So here we have the document with names, appearance of entities. And for each one, we have a handful in, in the best cases, but usually hundreds or thousands of candidate entities for very ambiguous names. So we have two types of nodes, the mentioned nodes and the entity nodes. And we have two types of edges. The mentioned entity edges are the edges that capture how similar this entity is to the input text. And the entity entity edges capture how related those two entities are. And then we try to solve this problem by finding a dense subgraph problem, a dense subgraph um, uh, of this graph that basically has only one entity connected to one mention. And this will capture both high similarity between the input context and the entities, together with uh, relatedness or semantic coherence between uh, selected entities in the final mapping. How we compute the mesh similarity and uh, coherence, this used some knowledge base. Uh, in, in our case, we, in, or AIDA, I mean the original one, we use Yago 2, this again, uh, knowledge base developed in-house in Max Planck Institute. We use it to compute all the ingredients here. And we see an example now to get even more details how we do it. So, for example, I mean, looking at our, our example, so let's just uh, now consider only two candidates for simplicity. So, we have the first component is prior. Prior is basically how frequently this mention, this string, is used to refer to this entity in Wikipedia. So, in, in other words, in given only the name, uh, the mention string, what is the most natural meaning for it? So, for example, over Wikipedia, usually the, the Sheikh Zayed is used to refer to the former president more than the city in Egypt, for example, right? And then we compute the similarity. So, for each entity, we associate like a, a set of key phrases, characteristic phrases, for this entity. For example, for, for the former president, it would be Abu Dhabi, kidney transplant, etc. And we then compute the overlap between those key phrases and the input text. For, for of course, in, in our case, it will be zero for uh, this entity. And for the city in Egypt, you have those key phrases. And then it will be slightly higher similarity because, this, of course, this is a correct one. And then we consider what are the related entities for each of them. So for, uh, for, for each of them, we have the set of enti related entities. And then we try to make sure that the entities we pick at the end are all related, are semantically related. So because, for, for example, because we have Egypt here in the sentence as well, so once we annotate all the mentions, this will also be mapped and then it would boost the score of this entity. H how we do it? So basically, those are, there are like four main components to perform this task. The first is entity repository. We need a catalog of all entities that are known to our system. 
because if, of course this is the first component that we'll have and for each of them we will need to have different ways of referring to th uh, this entity in text which is basically second component like name entity dictionary for each entity what are the different possible ways to refer to it and the second component is entity description so what are the key phrases for this entity this is what we used to overlap with the input text and the fourth is basically entity interrelated model in the original AIDA, again, what, how we do it, I mean, for entity repository, we are we're considering all named entities in, in the English Wikipedia. Uh, for uh, the name entity dictionary, we have four sources, are like the articles of the entities, we have the disambiguation pages, the redirects, and the anchors. I, I will explain this more later. And for entity descri uh, descriptions, we have the anchors, again, categories, incoming links, external links, and citation titles. And for the relatedness model, we use the in-link overlap model based on how, how those entities share incoming links in Wikipedia. Once we try to apply this for Arabic, we'll find that the four components are not um, rich enough to do proper disambiguation. If we extract, if we build our entity repository from Wikipedia, I mean Wikipedia is way smaller, so we'll have very small entity repository. And the same, of course, will affect like the name entity dictionary. It will have the same impact on the article titles and simulation pages, etc. The same for descriptions and the same for in-link overlap. I mean, small Wikipedia will harm the four pieces. So what we are trying to do basically is we tackle the four components and try to overcome this um, downside of uh, small side of Wikipedia. So for entity repository, instead of using Diago 2, we use Diago 3. It's again an another um, knowledge base developed in, in Max Planck, but this made to be multilingual from the beginning. So it, it combines different versions of Wikipedia from different languages. And then we, we use it because this will give us like both entities in all languages and then we will combine both the English and Arabic one as we'll elaborate later. For the dictionary, again we use the Iago, Iago 3 because it's multilingual and we also augment it with um, entries from Freebase. Uh, for entity descriptions, we harness the interwiki links in uh, Wikipedia to get a manual translation for entity names. So if you have an entity with an, an in-link to another version in English and Arabic, then we know that those titles are the translation of each other. And this is how we can replace those articles later for the descriptions in English. And for the entity interrelatedness model, we do the same. We harness the, in the in-links in both the English and Arabic Wikipedia. So let's, let's get first into details of the first one. So we have the, our English Wikipedia on the left and the Arabic Wikipedia on the right. And there are some common entities or, or pages in both which have inter links, basically. Our entity repository is the union of both. And this captures the common entities, of course, but also captures the prominent entities that don't have an, English, an Arabic counterpart, like Max Planck Institute for Informatics. And this prominent entity in the English Wikipedia, but it's not there for the Arabic one. And this also captures the culture-specific uh, entities like a Limby movie. I mean, this is very prominent in the Arabic world, although I wouldn't be happy to relate it to the, our culture, but it's a regional specific movie. It's very prominent, but doesn't have an, an English counterpart. Not because it's not prominent, because, because it's region specific. So we'd like to capture all of that because we are going to process English text. For name entity dictionary, as, as we said, I mean, we use the page titles, like, I mean, this is, I mean, those are in red. We also used redirects, like here, like Shagat to Laws is redirecting to Laws. We, we, we use both as different, possible different names for the same entity. And we also use the anchors. So Al-Fasila Wardiya, this is an anchor. So we get the entity it links to, and then we add this entry into our dictionary. And we also get for the disambiguation pages. So here, for example, from Medina Zayed, we have different possible entities for that. Then we add all those entries to our dictionary, okay? So for entity descriptions, we use the anchor text, and we use, as, as explained before, but with the link titles. And here we have to, to notice that we use, as I said, interwiki links to do translation. So for example, for Muassasat Qatar, we will have Nadi Barshlun as a key phrase. I mean, how we do it? Because in Nadi Barcelona page, Barcelona club page, there will be a link to Qatar Foundation, right? Because it's a sponsor of that uh, club. But if you don't have this link in Arabic Wikipedia, we'll still be able to add this key phrase because we will map Barcelona Club to Nadi Barcelona and Qatar Foundation to uh, Muassasat Qatar using the interweek links without any machine translation here. So we'll add this as a key phrase for the Qatar Foundation. And we do the same for Wikipedia categories. So we go for what are the categories in the English and Arabic ones and we translate the English ones using the interweek links again. 
And of course, we go for citation titles as is. For it in this model, we unify the entities from both uh, English Arabic Wikipedia, and then we compute the overlap among both set of entities. So the same story as before. If there is an incoming link in the English one, it's considered when computing relatedness model. So how, how our system is architectured? So this uh, system in the, uh, is the orange part, this is basically the original pipeline for the original AIDA system. So we have the English Wikipedia, we extract Iago out of it, and then we build AIDA. In order now to, to build our system, we added the Arabic Wikipedia down there, right? So Iago Extractor now will extract Iago 3 and provide us with two extra components, the Entity Entity Dictionary and Category Category Dictionary. This will be what we use later to translate the uh, entities and categories. We also feed the free base knowledge base together with the free base to Yago Dictionary. Free base is based on, it has Wikipedia IDs, so we can map it to Yago directly. And then we used all those, uh, like this part, to produce AIDA schema, but up to this it will be mixed one, like English and Arabic one. Then we use our dictionaries to translate them later on, to translate all the entities to be Arabic, all categories to be Arabic, and anchors as possible to be Arabic. Everything only if it is in, available in our manual dictionaries, no machine translation here. After that, what, what can be translated is translated, what cannot be it will stay in English, so we filter it out to have only AIDA, pure AIDA schema, uh, Arabic AIDA schema. So our, uh, up to our knowledge, there is no standard NED data set for Arabic. So we manually annotated 10, uh, 10 snippets of news articles from Al Jazeera website. I mean, it covers like sports and politics. There are some regional and international news articles. We configured data just to use the prior and key phrase overlap just to assess the quality of our system. This is very uh, work in progress now. So we just wanted to get a feeling of how, how, how uh, promising it is. We had uh, oh, uh, slightly over 100 mentions. AIDA, AIDA Arabic were ab was able to uh, map uh, 34 of them correctly. S uh, s around 70 were assigned to null and one was wrongly mapped. So to get a feeling how, how, how good we perform, so Joseph Platter, this was mapped correctly. I mean, it's a prominent entity. Qatar News Agency, it also was mapped correctly. Abu Zabal which is very region specific entities also met correctly. So indeed our entity repository covers what, what we wanted to have. But we have problems like Platter. I mean, although Platter is the last name, so in, in, the, in the English one we, we have this thing that the last name can map to the, the guy. In the Arabic one we don't have this. So although we managed to map Joseph Platter, we were not able to map only Platter. So this means that we have, this, this is also missing our dictionary. Another thing like low Moscow, like, I mean, connected propositions, connected pronouns, this harmed our system because it was not able to figure out that Moscow or Le Moscow is like the same thing, just the same candidate. And then Sunday Times, I mean, we have this entity, but, and we have the, like, the Sunday Times mentioned in our uh, news articles, but we don't have the mapping or the, this name entity dictionary entry. We don't know that this, how it's written in Arabic. We don't have this. Uh, so what, what, we, uh, what we are planning to do next, and actually it's, we, we are working on this now, we try to um, make our name into dictionary more comprehensive by adding those things like using transliteration, for example, Sunday Times. If we use transliteration, we'll be able to know that Sunday Times is the way to write Sunday Times in Arabic. And also for, to account for this uh, uh, like connected pronouns and, or, and prefix, suffix uh, nature of Arabic, we'd like to and for both, for, for, entity, for dictionary lookup and for uh, entity description uh, overlap, we try to employ some um, approximate matching or fuzzy matching between uh, the input text and uh, our knowledge base. And we, finally, if we do it, we'll be able to apply AID Arabics to social media because it's full of typos, but if you apply the uh, approximate matching, this will also work for the social media. For, with this, I conclude. Thank you for attention. Uh, that's a very valid point, and uh, indeed I, I, I should have done that. You're right. 
but the, I mean the, the byproduct of this that we be able to apply it for social media as well. I mean this would work for, for, for formal text, but any any like. Uh, but I mean for, for for I mean for social media like for Twitter, people are very sloppy when writing, so. Um, I don't trust those tools that you, I mean, they don't work anyway for English, right? I mean, typos and everything. So all like linguistically, people don't use the proper sentences, no grammar rules. So yeah, we can spend some time to, to use this stuff, but we had this social media uh, like target in, in our minds, so we wanted to move forward to that. But this very valid point, of course. Yeah, 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 of course, this very valid point. I totally agree. So the social media is not such a big thing. Okay. But as far as I understand, it will not be able to parse the sentence. I will not be able to get any post tags correctly. Okay. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Okay, but this is not related to Arabic, right? This is in general. I mean, this now. I mean, so for, for Aida, I mean, we, we have already an, uh, an approach to um, to include emerging entities from news. So we collect news, and we then we, we detect emerging entities, and then we add them, and we try to co automatically collect key phrases. It's an, another work in our group that my uh, my colleague is working on how to in, uh, like collect emerging entities and add them to the knowledge base. I mean. Uh, I can elaborate later, maybe you can take it offline. So, uh, my question actually is about evaluation. So, uh, you, you did some interesting examples in the beginning about name entity in the subdivision, the Sheikh Zayed case. But then at the end, some of what you're doing was more like name entity recognition, in fact, not just the subdivision, if I understood correctly. Mm, which, which are you referring to? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, I mean, in this part, so maybe I should ask a clarification. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. The task was you give it the text and then you identify the result, or your system identifies these three words here are name entity. Yes. So, and you're, so that's kind of like name entity recognition. No, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So, I, I, I find this is like the name the entity and this is the correct entity it should map to. I notate, I don't do any R, so any R is, is out of scope here. Exactly, just find that, to, like find it or map it to the correct one in a catalog of entities. Okay, but then I'm kind of confused, so in the case of Lemasco, why are you saying the L is part of the name entity recognition? Why not just mark it from the name of Moscow and then you would not have a problem? You're making odd assumptions about what you know and what you don't know. Yeah, that's... Um, a valid point, right? But I mean, the point is we use the tokenizer that tokenizes on the white spaces. So this is one token for us. I mean, I mean this, this work is, is, is the, I mean, it's like, okay. So we are working with this. 
for social media and to be multilingual as well. I mean, the ultimate goal of this is to have like language agnostic in AD system. So regardless from the input, input language, we will we try to do an AD. So this is why we, we try to stay away from using any language specific uh, uh, tokenization or parsing or anything. So this is like the ultimate goal. So this is why for this, I mean the tokenization we use uh, white space tokenizer. Of course for, for Arabic it would have made more sense, I agree with you, to, to use more spe Arabic specific NER system that will, uh, or tokenization system that will separate the L and Moscow and then we'll be able to get it right. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm not aware of this, so can, can, can you give me more details later? Uh -huh. Selected random 103 named entities. I would be more interested to see select 103 mentions for the same entity, and this is how we can correctly evaluate this, uh, the, the system. Maybe our random 103 only linking to only one. Thing. Yeah, but, but yeah, but but this is not the way our NED works. I mean, it's like NED evaluation is standard. I mean, you have a, I mean, there's standard way to evaluate NED systems, right? There are like kernel data and every like and everything. So you have data, you have mentions, and the correct entity. And this is like the way NED is evaluated. It's like not something I came up with. This how NED is. I mean, this would be another another metric, of course, but this is not the one that's used in NED. I mean, I mean, you are referring to how easy the data set is, basically. I mean, this this. I mean, how ambiguous the mentions are. This this. I mean, this. I mean, how you evaluate the data set. Exactly. So yeah. This this. Yeah, exactly. So this is how ambiguous the set is, yes. but this is not how we evaluate it, right? So you evaluate it. This is the way to evaluate any AD system. I mean, how easy this? Maybe, maybe that. I mean, that set is just. Maybe I told you. I mean, there is no standard NED in a data set available. So this we, we had to uh, manually annotate this ourselves. I mean, I mean, we as I told you, this now in going work. I mean, we have uh, we are working on this. We are, we try to build. Um, more systematic uh, data sets for, to extract from Wikipedia or to use parallel corpora from English. So we, we, ha we have uh, uh, other approaches in mind to build uh, some data set for evaluation, but no, no, I mean, it's still work in progress, basically. Uh, more questions? If not, I think we're at the end of the session. Thank you very much. For Thank you.